Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass. I'm your host, Sam, from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. And I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. Yes, you are. Uh, each week we get together, we talk about cars, motorsport, F1, car, what else? Cars? Cars. We cars, talk about cars, cars. We? <laughs> <laughs> You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can watch us on youtube.com forward slash Behind the Glass. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And Tony, if people want to support this podcast, what should they do? Watch it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but also head to Patreon. You can support us on patreon.com forward slash behind the glass. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the episode. How you been? I'm all right, mate. I, I'm actually going to take this jacket off because I'm a bit warm. I have nailed the radiator placement today. Do you, you put them on timers, don't you? They are now constantly on because the oh. temperature has weirdly <laughs> dropped again after a sort of mini heat wave at the end of March. Oh, I've no idea. What have you done? Well, I'm going to pull everything off and on. Careful. Why didn't you do this before we started because recording? Because you just sort of... Uh, Launched I mean, I into it. We do levels and then you just go, we're on. Don't do levels anymore, mate. I know. You don't I'm touch it. I, know, I don't touch it. Can you see I've put stickers on the on the recording machine so that we don't have to touch it ever again. Yeah. Okay, you comfortable now? I'm ready. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> no, don't start again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, stick with it. Come on. What were we talking about? God, no. The oh, weather. The weather. Yeah, anyway, so because it got colder again, having unplugged all the radiators, I've now plugged them all in, positioned them very well for this studio, um, and now just leave them on the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Which is ridiculous, isn't it? Yes. I mean, what happened to the spring? Big electric bill. Big electric bill. Let's not think about that right now. Um, but yeah, how was your weekend? Anything? Did you get up to anything? Do anything? No, not no. got not a great deal. Did you? Um, I did actually. I went for like my first drive, uh, oh. pretty much of the year in terms of like a convoy esque drive. So uh, Merlin, the Duke of London himself, uh, and a couple of the other guys from down here at the sort of the factory. We went out for a drive around the Chilterns, northwest sort of yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of London. Yeah, very good. It was nice. Took the 996. Why did you only go local? Is that as far as you could all go? <laughs> In them old cars. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we weren't looking to go that far, you know. You've got to keep it local still. Did um, you have any it, mechanical problems? Uh, you? One, I didn't. No. Someone on the convoy did. Um, but there was a mechanical problem. There was a mechanical problem. I mean, we were all in older cars. So Merlin was in the 190E Merc. I was in the 996, 911 and there was a an old V8 Vantage. So not like old shape as a 1970s V8 Vantage. What broke down? Uh, oil leak. In Didn't what, break down, kept going the whole day. In what car? The V8 Vantage, the I old Vantage. I my case. No, but like, I'm talking like yeah. old, like, so, <laughs> I'm talking like classic Aston. Not like, I don't mean like the one parked outside. Like I'm talking old, the old boxy, it's an actual classic. It doesn't matter how old they are. They're all bad. <laughs> can we talk about EVs again? No, no. don't even. <laughs> you are. I can tell what kind of mood you're in today. But no, it was nice to go on a sort of drive for the first time in a long time. First time Vicky had been in the 911. She approved. So that was always encouraging. And it was, it was nice just to be out driving with people. I mean, it you know, wasn't the most exhilarating convoy ever with those three cars, but, but we had a nice time. And you got done for curb crawling. Yeah. <laughs> it felt good though. It felt good. When was, I mean, if, when was the last time you went on like a drive, like a convoy drive? A convoy drive? A while ago. I've been out on a couple of drives in the last couple of weeks in my new car, but... Oh? Um, oh, I... I, and I did do something yesterday. I did saw um, a Black Series. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, which one? Um, Zen Cars one. No, no. But so the new, the AMG GT, the AMG GT Black Series. Mm. Catchy name. Um, first one you've seen in the flesh? First one I've seen in the flesh. Thoughts, please. The wing is huge. Huge. Like... I didn't think wings could be that big. Yeah, it's you can't really get away from it, can you? Mate, I don't know how it's legal. I mean, you could ch honestly chop someone's head off. Yeah. Have you seen the end canards on it? I mean, of course. It, I, um, I'd like to drive one. Would you? Yeah. What did he say? Uh, not a lot. Oh. <laughs> done, done 40 odd miles in it. Oh, but, okay. Um, it was of it, and it was exactly how I would spec it. It's all black. Um, it looks cool. You open the door, it looks like any other Mercedes. But it is special. Um, once again, like I said to him, I can't get over the the money of it. As in, I don't mean to be derogatory, but it is just a Mercedes. I say just, it is a very special Mercedes, but it is a Mercedes. And if you put a Ferrari or a Lamborghini beside it, I think it gets a bit exposed. 
Yes, and, and as we've mentioned before on this podcast, because of the sort of prior versions of the AMG GT, I don't think it feels as special as an ordinary Black Series would because we've had so many iterations, GTC, GTR, GTR Pro, GT, you know, all these things. Now the Black Series is like, oh, okay, well, it's just a GTR Pro with a big wing and something like different. Yeah. Which it is a lot more than that, but... I mean, you know, I, I didn't love the car when I experienced it. You know, mm. I thought it was it was impressive, but I didn't love it and, and didn't think it was night and day over, you know, GTR Pro in terms of, in, in my hands, um, at least on track. I'm sure it is if you get it into somebody who can, who's you know, a lot more capable than yeah. I am. On the road, I think very unnecessary, if, if I'm honest, <clears throat> but so many cars are. On yeah, the road. it's got, it's got, a huge amount of presence front and rear if you're following it or you're behind it sorry if you've sorry if you're in front of it or behind it yeah um no wonder people go in on it about the noise i mean there isn't any there's no noise right i mean it's literally silent yeah i mean it when he first started it up because obviously it's the first one i'd even heard sure when he first started it up it sounded like for people that have not heard it it sounded like um uh, M5 Comp. That's what it because it's a flat line crank V8. Sure, so it's, it, it's that noise essentially. But it is like mute, mate. Even when he drove off down the road and he didn't boot it, but he drove off, and I thought I can't even hear it. New regulations. I mean, I do feel like that car is particularly stifled because of its engine setup and a lot of other things going on. Um, but, you know, I think this is the future, unfortunately. You know, days of loud, shouty exhausts behind us, at least mm. here in the UK and in the, in the EU. So we're just going to have to get used to it, but it is very disappointing given the presence and the looks of the car. It's odd, though, because the Italians still manage it, don't they, with the Evo and the Ferraris? I mean, I know I know the um, the turbocharged Ferraris, that, that they're not quite as screamy as the NA cars, but they're still loud, mate. But there's some difference here, and somebody did try and explain it to me after I went on the press drive, and I'm going to now get this completely wrong, and everyone feel free to correct me. Uh, firstly, the Evo is different. There's something with regards to Lamborghini, which means that they can get away with being a bit louder. Because they don't make enough cars, that's why. I think you're right. Uh, same with Ferrari. Same with Ferrari. Um, but also, the AMG GT Black Series is of a model year, that has even has been regulated even further, been restricted even further. So when you start to compare it with the likes of an F8 or a Roma or a Huracan Evo, they've obviously they're out, they're on the road. But mm. the GT Black is only hitting the road now, which means it's fallen into a newer category. So as I say, it's even more restricted. Um, and yeah, it, the thing is. What can we do? You can't blame Merck. I mean, you can blame the world, but but what's the point of being upset about it? But it's it's just hard when you're spending that kind of money and you're seeing that car. You say the presence it's got. Whether I still think it looks a bit mansory. I don't think it looks Mercedes. I think it looks a bit after you know aftermarket sort of modified Max Power esque. But you see that and you think, wow, this thing's going to be nuts. And then it starts up and it's like, Ugh. like uh, honestly, mate, like you can hear the, the birds whistling. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that is how quiet it is. Insane, though, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm interested that you kind of want to have a go, and I kind of want you to have a go. I remember, obviously, when Archie did the same experience I did, he loved it, because he was obviously driving it a million times better than I could and, and yeah. accessing parts of its abilities, you know, that I couldn't even get near. So he thought it was very impressive. But, but and I, I, I say, on track, I definitely credit you as being a more competent driver than myself. Okay. But on the road, I think we're kind of close. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, God, you only go that fast, can you go on? Exactly. Do you point, remember when we were in Scotland? proven. Do you remember when we were yeah, in yeah, Scotland? Yeah, in the, in the McLaren. <laughs> oh, my God. We were on a supercar convoy tour, and I think you and I were continuously harassing mainly John T in his lead car, or whoever's at the front. <laughs> and we'd have to wait, we'd have to pull over in five minutes, wait for people to catch we up. <laughs> We because were they were driving at 50 and we were driving at 60. Correct. <laughs> um, so, well, cool. I'm glad you've seen it. I still haven't seen one on the public road yet. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for that. There are a few now that have been delivered uh, in London and around London. Okay, three. Thank you very much for that. Great, <laughs> great, great knowledge. I didn't realise you were tracking them. Have you got a sort of VIN number website, have you? Mate, I know a little bit more sometimes than you give me credit for. You I know. don't think you do. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Well, as a complete flip side, and talking about cars that don't sound good, I experienced a car which sounded very good. I know last what you're going to say. So, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> because yes, I had the chance to get behind the wheel of GTO Engineering's 250 short wheelbase revival. I know, and I called you, 
and you said, you was like, I thought you was going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> and you went, mate, mate, I, mean, I, I, can't, I can't talk. I can't. I, <laughs> but you, I literally, Tony calls and I have to pull over and I just shout at him. I'm in a 250 short wheelbase. I can't talk. And I just said, you saying, liar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'll send you a photo when I get back. So I had to literally just drive off and then send you a photo later. Who's having me on? I mean, honestly, I mean, what an experience. I'm still kind of recovering from it. How much is that car? So the GT engineering car starts at around 850 grand. Mm -hmm. Obviously with all of these things, you can go crazy. If you want to paint it gold, you want to paint it gold. But, but relatively speaking, you're going to be buying that for under a mil. A, a cheapest, I reckon an original car with a sort of unimpressive history is probably six, seven million pounds. Mm -hmm. So considerably more affordable than an original car. And my point, my realization was, I think actually, who cares about the original cars? You know, if, if someone like GTO Engineering can do this and as well as they have, I mean, just get the cheaper car. I mean, just- What's it based on? A 250 short wheelbase. Like literally. Okay, so they essentially take, this is what's hilarious, and this is why there's so much value in it. A donor Ferrari 250 could be a, a Lusso or a GT, it could be a variant of a 250 or potentially a 330, so a slightly later car. They completely rip it apart. They analyze everything, even like nuts and bolts. And they Do go, they? okay, well, that one's good or let's repair that one. Let's replace that one. And all oh, that fan wasn't very good in the 60s, so we can slightly improve that. And then they put it all back together in a short wheelbase configuration, make a short wheelbase body, drape it over the top and off you go. So as per a blueprint, it is a 250 short wheelbase, but it just didn't leave the factory in 1960 as a 250 short wheelbase. Okay. It left as a slightly different Ferrari. And the, the, the technology inside it, all the stuff, it all works. Is it a little bit like what Singer do to Porsche? Not that level, no. So okay. in my mind, Singer almost take their cars to a level where they're not even really Porsches anymore. Fair. Do you know what I mean? Like I know it is reimagined by Singer and it is yeah, still yeah. a Porsche 911, but they're almost every single part has been replaced by a different part. Yeah. Whilst with the GTO engineering car, they're replaced by identical or slightly improved parts. Basically, if you had a 250 short wheelbase and you went, oh, damn it, my suspension's broken or, or something, I pranged it and, I, and you called up Ferrari and you said, hi, I need this. They go, oh, we don't have those parts on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, but, we don't have them anymore. Give us five minutes and they call up GTO engineering. Oh, right. And they say, have you got any of these? And GTO go, yeah, no problem. So, so where do they get them from? They make them. They make them. Engineer them. Because they've been restoring these cars and rebuilding these cars for so many years. Amazing. When the parts weren't available, they mm. learn how or, or, or set up a way that they could build those parts themselves in an identical way. Sometimes improve them if they needed to be stronger or if they had the ability, they're learning the technology to improve them. They did, but within the keeping of the car. As I say, they didn't go, oh, that F12 suspension's really good. Let's see if we can get that on a short, short wheelbase. It is a 1960s car, just more reliable, more durable, and slightly better. So for brakes, okay, so here's an example. I'm really getting carried away now. No, 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 I like it. So uh, 250 was, uh, and the sh I, don't know if it's the sh I don't think it was the short wheels. Anyway, first time Ferrari had disc brakes, because obviously they had drum. Yeah, yeah. But whilst that was a big improvement or big advancement at the time, obviously they're still very old. Instead of completely changing that and putting carbon ceramics on, which would be ridiculous, <laughs> but some, you know, resto mod companies would do, They've just slightly improved the pads. So you get a little bit more bite, they're a little bit better, but you still have that feeling that you're in a 96 car, which is basically that the brakes aren't going to do anything until you really stamp on get them. Get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just bail. Just get out of the door as quickly as you can. So as I say, it is as close to a real experience as you could get. Yeah. In fact, so close that I think it would be hard for some people to tell. Just slightly better. And they've made 55 of these cars now over the years. So it's not like a new thing. They've been know. doing these for a while. And a lot of their customers own original 250 short wheelbases. Amazing. But they, because of the value of them now and because of how hard it is to get original parts, mm. they decide to park them up, get GTO Engineering to, buy an, to build an exact copy, an exact replica, and that's the one they go and drive and use every day. Well, that's always the problem with some of these classic cars as well. Um, <clears throat> a friend of mine is uh, building one of them Audi Quattros. Oh, cool. Okay, um, yeah. And he needs a rear screen. Mm-hmm. Can't get it. No. Yeah. Audi not don't make it right. anymore. No, no, no. That's it's the not. thing. Like, like, so he's got to try and find a second-hand one or get uh, a glazier to... You to, know, to custom make one. Custom make one. And that's the thing. And when you start doing that with Ferraris that cost 
five, 10, 15 mil, yeah, yeah. you start to lose value because a do. lot of that value is in the originality. Yeah. So the minute you start replacing parts, even if it is an original Ferrari part, the numbers, the history, it doesn't all match up, it doesn't all add up. So that's why I think what GT Engineering are doing are brilliant because they're keeping these cars on the road, keep letting people use them, whether they've got the originals or not. But then for people like me who thought, there's no hope in this world, unless I win the, the lottery, I'm never going to own a 250 short wheelbase. But at 850,000, I'm like, you know what? Okay, it's a big goal. But hey, there. if Shmi can own a Senna and a Ford GT, why can't I own a 250 short wheelbase arrival? You better start selling them coffees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested in seeing your glass blend, visit now, drinkperler.co.uk forward slash STG. Coming next week. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> <laughs> Buy four, get half a pack free. I gotta make profits, Tony. <laughs> anyway, amazing experience. It's been amazing to see some people react so positively to it. This is where YouTube still blows my mind, right? Mm. You know, I like to make videos in a certain style, in a certain format. I like telling stories. I like, you know, setting up shots in a certain way, filming in a certain way. It makes my life harder because I have to film more, edit more, do more, think more, etc. This was another example where on the day, very hard car to film. Yeah. Insanely loud. The paint was very thin. So they asked if I couldn't, I, they didn't want any GoPros on the paint. They said, feel free to use the decals, the white dots, but not on the paint. So again, I'm sort of restricted. I had to drive about an hour to get to a road that was quiet enough to film on. Getting in and out, it's harnesses. You've got to start up. If it goes cold, you've got to pump the, the accelerator three times before it starts. So, you know, not an easy car to film. No. And I'm like, I don't think I've done this car justice on video more positive comments than any video I filmed for the last year. But but you, mate, you often think that. I know. That you, oh, I haven't quite done it properly. Let's just do that again. Like, you're seeking perfection and always. sometimes YouTube isn't about that. I think it's actually always not about that. Yeah. And there's a part of me which I think moving forward to be a better YouTuber, <laughs> I think I need to stop worrying about the perfect angle and find the perfect stuff to film, the perfect yeah. opportunity. And, and I said it at the beginning of the year, I need to film more Ferraris because it's all I love. I mean, I just love doing it. Yeah, of course. It comes naturally to me. And I think, you know, those kind of opportunities, clearly no one cared about the angles I did in my head. No of one course. cared about the angles, but it still was a great video because of the, the moment, the opportunity, my reaction, et cetera, et cetera. So I've taken note, people, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Very cool. And hopefully we'll do more of that. Anyway, today's episode is going to be a bit of a different one, a bit of a quirky one. We're going to do something which a few people did in lockdown one, and I've now stolen their ideas. Have you? Which is to react to fellow YouTubers' car collections. Oh, I'm going to upset some people <laughs> here today. Oh. <laughs> you are, I mean, you really are going to upset some people and potentially Sorry, upset, everyone. <laughs> upset some of my friends. <laughs> so I'm here to, to get you to calm down okay, and ensure that I can still collaborate with some people moving no, forward. Well, I'm just going to tell the truth. Right. So, because that's what <laughs> that's what people like. They like the honesty. So, sure. I'll just tell the truth. I hope that's the case. Um, so now, look, there are so many car YouTubers these days. So many car collectors who've become YouTubers. So many. Uh, I mean, just there's a lot of things out there. there are, I've lost yeah. track. <laughs> so we're not going to be covering every single car YouTuber in the world. It was impossible. Jay Leno, for example, I would consider him a car collector with a TV show. Mm. Not a YouTuber with a car collection. No, 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 no. So, you know, uh, anyway, if I have forgotten your favourite YouTuber, if there's a channel that you watch which you obsess over that you think we should have reviewed or you think deserves a shout out, comment below. If you're listening to us, head over to YouTube or tweet us, hashtag behind the glass. Let us know. These are just the ones that I know I think would be funny to get Tony to react to, are impressive for whatever reason. So, you know. Has he got, has he got one of the biggest car collections in the world, Jay Leno? Yeah, yeah. He has, hasn't he? Uh, insane. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Um, a fair play to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I wouldn't call him a YouTuber. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he's, got no. An ama- he's got a huge YouTube channel, uh, yeah, but yeah. not a YouTuber. No, 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 no. Um, also, I did actually ask some people on Twitter and Instagram for some suggestions. Fair. And the one thing which became clear is there was kind of like three or four YouTubers who seemed to be sort of people's favourite or, or have people's favourite collections. So we're going to save them for the end. Okay. So initially, I'm just going to roll through like a few that maybe you don't know because you don't watch that much car YouTube, do you? No. No. So I'm thinking that you might not know about quite a few of these cars or at least these YouTubers. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I don't watch a lot of YouTube at all. In general. In general. Yeah. I, I, you know, I I dip in and out, but yeah, I, I no. Okay. Can you see my screen? 
I can't see what's written on it, but I can no. see the screen. Okay, so here we go. We're going to kick things off. <laughs> <laughs> we got UK YouTuber Archie Hamilton. Someone's put him in. I actually can't keep track of what people have. Like, I don't really know. So I put Archie's picture here with his M4 competition, which I think he picked up last week. That's his dad's car. Right. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. It's oh, okay, it's his car. <laughs> He's still got a Golf R? Uh, yeah, he has. Is the M8 gone then? Uh, uh, n- no, I don't think he has, but so I, he's, think it, I think he's going. It's going, and he had an RS6, but that's gone because there's something else coming as well. Yeah. Right. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Archie, I'm going to be honest, not a fan of that M4. Didn't uh, really like it when I drove it. So when I spoke to him, when he told me he was getting it, I said I would have had the M3, personally. Same. Yeah. And also, I think he's a madman to have bought that in inverted commas, new. I don't know what, you know, maybe he's got a mega deal. Who knows? But mm. I think they're huge amounts of money and I'm not sure they will be for very long. No. No. I mean, we'll let him tell you the ins and outs of how he got it and where he got it from. It's not really us to say. I mean, I know, but I, I'll let him... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, don't, don't land him in it fully, no. but I mean... <laughs> as much as I'd like to. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, congrats. Yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. an like cool car to go and buy. Not for me. And alongside a Golf R and an M8, I'm like... It's like a weird theme here of very similar cars. All a bit samey. All yeah. a bit samey, but I do think he's got some other things coming. And we like Archie fundamentally, so I'm not going to be too horrible. He's got a very good heart, the boy, and uh, he has got a cool car coming, to be fair. Fair enough. So you know what? Bravo. We'll, yeah. we'll give you a, a small thumbs. <laughs> like I mean, a level. By the way, I'm in no position to judge anyone's car collections. Like, like <laughs> maybe you are slightly, <laughs> but like there were a few people on Instagram who were like, ah, oh, your collection's the best. And I was like, <laughs> are you drunk? Because I love my cars, but there's, they're in no way an impressive collection. Like two nearly 20-year-old cars, a Ferrari and a Porsche and an Abarth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you're not really about that, are you? I'm not about that. I just I get cars that I really like. But as I say, so any criticism which I put out, I'm not in a, really in a place to do. But uh, yeah, it's only because it's Archie and we can give him a hard yeah, time. Yeah, he knows it? we're yeah. only playing. Now, moving on. Do we call him a YouTuber? I don't know. But I've put Chris Harris in there because I think one of the coolest personally owned cars on the internet. He is not a uh, I think journey. he's still a YouTuber. Is yeah, he? but it, I mean, Chris Harris on cars, is, uh, come on, that's proper, yeah. it's proper YouTubing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I like them. I mean, so he's got, I think it's, bah- it, no, that's not Bahama Yellow. Maybe he's Racing Yellow. Oh God, I don't actually is know it, which is Yellow. It ra- is it Racing Yellow? It's the GT3 Touring. Yeah. Silver wheels, very important. Yeah. yeah. In a yellow, and actually, I know Chris dips in and out of this every now and again. Chris, if you are listening to this particular episode, uh, let us know which exact yellow it is. And I should, as a as Porsche nerds, we should know. He drives that a lot, right? Well, he had one before, didn't he? Which I think unfortunately got in a tangle. Yeah. And he went out and got another one. Yeah. Which just proves my theory that the GT3 Touring, just one of the best cars ever. Yeah. I mean, I just, I would still adore one. I actually saw him drive past me in Bristol in that one time and sounded good, looked great. I, that's what I say, like, go for colourful. I just think it's so cool. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I, yeah, very good. I think he's now got an M2 CS alongside. Yeah, but he had an M2 comp. I don't, like, I can't yeah, get uh, my... Have M- you driven that CS, though? No, no, but I, I, like, I know, mate. I know it's probably going to be better, but what I'm trying to say to you is, is it... Yes. You've driven it. <laughs> yes, I yeah, have. But no, but what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> yes. is it is it yes. twice as good as a yes. comp? It is twice as good. Well, <laughs> I just can't see it, mate. No, it's not twice as good, but it's if you can... the money, mate. Yeah, but if you can... I mean, it's it's GT4 versus GTS 4 liter Cayman chat. If there's... The GT4 is always going to be more aspirational. It's always going to be the one that you want more than a GTS 4 liter but you might as well save the money unless you're going to be on track all the time. Yeah, fair. So, but you're, you're always going to want the GT4. Ask anyone, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll get the GT4. But actually, there's no point, just get the GTS. And so M2 competition versus M2 CS, that's the same argument in my mind. There's something about the CS which just makes it more attractive. You just want it, it's just cooler. It just, it just is it better. Does look, it does look better, to be fair, but it's got to look better for the, I mean, it's like, it is literally nearly double the money. I know. I know it's not list to list, but you, you don't pay list for an M2 comp. Do you pay list for an M2 CS? I guess you do. Uh, uh, I, I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think as you would hope, two proper driver's cars. I mean, I expect yeah, no less yeah, than Chris. Yeah. You know, yeah, if yeah. It, I don't know what would ruin 
his image, but if he suddenly had an automatic what boxster <laughs> i think, think we judge i think he likes his old stuff more than the modern stuff he's right? definitely got some old bits but i just i think two modern drivers cars i i applaud and i still do consider him a youtuber even though he's gone to greater heights i think mm. i'm gonna give that thumbs up. now right get ready for the next one because i don't think you would have seen this and i'm excited to see your reaction oh oh what welcome is- to dde daily driven exotics don't know who he is american canadian oh. big youtuber huge <laughs> uh, one of one let me get this right Hurricane Evo rear wheel drive Aperta it's got no screen mate exactly so this was crash. This, no this is his own project so it's obviously not from factory but in the mentality in the ethos of a Monza or an Elva or whatever he went out and created a Hurricane Aperta obviously open so no windscreen no roof he's got to wear a helmet it's an interesting look but this is one of the coolest things I think I've seen anyone do. Because why not? He's mad anyway. They're mad anyway. But I just think this is brilliant. I think it looks the part. He's tuned it. It's got a VF supercharger. It's like 800 something horsepower to the rear wheels. Really? Yeah. You said, what if he crashes? It's inbuilt because it's a, originally a spider. Uh, it's got the rollover technology from Lambo. So it's relatively safe. I, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in a crash in it, but it's relatively safe. Uh, and it just looks mega. I mean, like, You've got to be kind of a madman to chop a roof off a hurricane, haven't you? Uh, yeah, but he hasn't chopped it off, has he? It's no, it, it's not, it's, he's chopped the windscreen off. Yeah, he just took the windscreen out. Still, you're mad. Yeah, yeah. But like you just said, they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it. Do you not like the way it looks? I mean, you went, ooh. Uh, yeah, I love the way it looks. But um, yeah, at first, I thought it was an, uh, a Ventador. At first Did glance. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, but then, yeah, when I looked in, I could see it was a, it was an Evo. Because I'm quite a while away from that screen, to be Yeah, sure. you are quite far away. I'm surprised you could see it at all. Uh, yeah, not for me. Not really? No, no, I like the look of it. It's good to look at, but... On track, can you not imagine it? No! No, really? No. Over it, no. No chance. Oh, I think it's kind of cool. All right. Okay. Uh, now, oh. yes, you can't really see here. Doug DeMuro. Uh, sorry. I mean, huge YouTuber. Oh, why huge. don't I know any of these people? As I say, you don't watch a lot of no. car on YouTube. Um, he's a bit Shmi-esque in the sense where he does, like he reviews cars in a very formulaic way. Anyway, you should check him out. He's good. He's very, 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 very good. Um, uh, American again? American again. Arguably one of the biggest in the world. <laughs> Honestly, really? Genuinely. <laughs> and he's got a handful of cars, but I've picked the RS2 as the one because you don't get many RS models in America anyway, Mm-mm. especially not the RS2. They only just were able to import them. Uh, so he's got this, he's got, New Defender, Old Defender. He's got a Ford GT, the old 2006 shape. Nice. And there's something else I'm forgetting, which he's got. Oh, a G, one of those convertible G-Wagons. Ah. Super cool. That is a cool car. But again, he likes his quirks. That's his sort of catchphrase. Mm -hmm. And RS2 is a quirky car. Did you ever have any experience of these back in the day? Uh, I, they were around. They were around and about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I can't remember if if I've ever driven one, but... Uh, I probably have, but um, yeah. The, what, the, was there hype when they act? Because nowadays everyone's like, oh, it's like a bit of Porsche and it's so cool. But actually at the time was everyone was like, well. Not that, you know, the in that era, the hype, because of, there was no social media back then, you'd either only see it in the paper or on Top Gear, even if that was around then. Yeah. You wouldn't, there wouldn't really be any big, you'd maybe get an advert from Audi, but... Yeah, you know, you hype's, didn't go around going, "Oh, I want to see an RS2." Yeah, mm. y- yeah, hype. You know, in the eighties and the nineties, so that's a nineties car, that, isn't it? I mean, it's nineties. I yeah. think it's nineties. Yeah, ninety-two. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Or it's not I just said that because it's an RS2. Ninety-four, maybe. Anyway, sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't really a thing back then. Really, the, the big hype for cars has only really been since social media. I think. Well, there is a lot of hype around these at the moment. They're yeah, trading. Yeah. They're pretty valuable, fifty odd grand, I think, for Amazing. for a decent one. Um, but yeah, developed in partnership with Porsche, Porsche brakes. Uh, you can see Porsche wheels. Yeah. Um, a few other bits and bobs and actually had Porsche badge on it as well. So anyway, yeah, co- very, very, very cool thing. And a bit like with Chris, it, like Doug's cars are very Doug, if that makes any sense. Like if you watched any of his videos, you wouldn't be surprised by the cars he owns. Okay, fair. Um, so that, that was cool. So we, yeah. All like quirky stuff. Exactly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now you're not really going to see this picture. I don't know why I've got such small photos to display for you. They'll be much bigger for our viewers and listeners. Uh, well, not for our listeners because they can't see anything, <laughs> but for our viewers. <laughs> now, this is F-Spot, Gordon, based out in LA. 
Don't know him. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Definitely not your kind of content, but he's a legend. Absolute hero. You've met him? Yeah, yeah. I know Gordon well, luckily. Okay, good. I'm honoured to know Gordon well. Very good. And one of these cars, my dream, he beat me to it. White, Mark 1, Gardo Superleggera. Oh, you keep that. Have you still, you still got a hot spot for it? Still just before. You're 100%. If I was a rich man, that's the route I go. But I've got different plans in life, Tony. I know. I've already announced the F-Type. Mm-hmm. That plan is on. And now I've got to save up for my 250 short wheelbase <laughs> revival. So I think the Superleggera might not happen. But, but if I'd gone down a different path in life, still right up there. So cool. But you don't like Lambo. I don't, but I like that. Okay. You don't like it? You're still not... F- uh. Not really. Have you picked up on the theme yet for the Americans, by the way? Yeah, all old shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. We'll keep going. You will figure that out in a second. Now, the other two cars, so not you. In the middle, and I'm always going to pronounce it wrong. I think it's a Bokosuka car. Oh, I'm not even going to try and say it. Japanese car. Yep. Look at those tailpipes. Yep. Right up your street. Yep. And on the oh. right is a V12 Merc with yep. the most hilarious exhaust you've ever heard on it in your life. Sounds better than a Zonda. Sounds better and louder than a Zonda. Really? So he cruises around LA in that thing and people arrest him all the time. Really? It's, ama- it's amazing. <laughs> so he's a mega troll, Fair basically. So, you know, three very quirky cars, kind of out there. I mean, how any of them ever work, I don't know. But he's just a genius. I think, like, why not? I will say one thing about the Americans that I have noticed in the, in the pictures is that they've all customised them all. A lot of customization. Yeah. And also a lot of like quirkiness. Yeah. Like even Doug, like there's not like, no one's really turned up yet with an M4, like, like Archer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they th- think, think outside the box a little yeah, bit. Yeah, always yeah. with the different wacky yeah. stuff. But Gordon's collection is one of my favorite, just because it's just mad. Mm. And I think only Gordon could pull it off. Fair. Moving on. Now, Manny Koshbin. Oh, no, he is. Yeah. I put him in the same category as Jay Leno. Oh. No. <laughs> Did you say it's you? <laughs> the same level of collector <laughs> as Tony. <laughs> you know, you're not wrong, Tony. No. It's very similar. <laughs> the unit down in Gravelwood. Is, he likes Hermes. He likes Hermes. Hermes. Hermes, Hermes. Whatever it's called. Hermes. And what's the other brand he likes? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, he, likes, he likes Bugatti. So how do you know about Manny? Uh, I, I come across him through someone else. Okay. I mean, it's, it's quite hard ago. to not come across him. Yeah, he's been around yeah, yeah. for ages. And the reason I say I put him in the same class as Jay Leno is, I think he was a big famous collector well before he became a YouTuber. Yeah. He's now a huge YouTuber, but I think he's predominantly lots of other things. Real real estate he does, right? I actually don't know. Yeah, I think yeah. he's real estate. Okay, yeah. fair enough. But I mean, this picture is, again, just part of his collection. I'm looking at 4GT, I think, Heritage Edition, McLaren Speedtail, there's a Veyron, there's a Huara, there's a P1. I, was saying, I mean, that's just one corner of his So I garage. didn't even know he'd done YouTube. Oh, yeah, he's got big, big YouTube channel now. Okay. Didn't he buy like six SLRs or something? Yeah, probably. I mean, he's, he's, he's yeah, a genius yeah, madman. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's got beautiful laid out growth. And you can see a part yeah. of it there. It's like stunning. And I think we have to applaud that. I mean, you yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't knock the man. I mean, he's, yeah. he's mad, but you can't knock him. Yeah, I did follow him for a while on Instagram. I haven't followed him because I didn't know him. It's and too similar to your own content, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's too similar to my own personal garage. I feel a bit embarrassed but I don't post it anymore. Uh, <laughs> you're such an idiot. <laughs> Monsieur Seb Delany. Ah, bless him. We can do he talk now? Seb. He can talk oh, now. He's got good. his voice back. Uh, so I've included his scud here. Mm-hmm. He has just picked up, you know he's picked up a turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very nice. 991.2. Mm, black on good. black. Good value there. Lovely spec. Mm. Um, but the scud is just mad. Yeah, I look at scud. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Really? Yeah, because yeah, I know yeah. every now and again you get tempted. I do, yeah. But would you ever have one like Seb's? Not a left-hand drive one, no. <laughs> With those mods? No. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I meant. I mean... It's amazing, but very not you. No, he's ruined it. <laughs> I think it's cool. But, uh, it's not a Ferrari. I'd I never do that to a Ferrari, but uh, I think it's cool. But why do you think it's cool then? Because, because I don't want it, but I like that someone's done it. Do you know what I mean? Well, I don't. I mean, he's absolutely <laughs> chaffed it. <laughs> Poor Sepp. Sepp, Sepp. 
<laughs> I think it's brilliant. I think it's very cool. He owns that car and the stories uploads from Monaco, hooning that thing around, insane. And then I say now he's added a turbo. I mean, like nearly dream car garage. The he's totally trumped me, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah I got yeah. a nine nine six and a three six, and he's got a scud and a turbo. <laughs> and you live in the UK, and he <laughs> lives in Monaco. <laughs> Seb, what a dick. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, very impressive. I have to say. Uh, okay, now do you know who the Strad Man is? Yes. Okay, we all know about the Strad Man. But I only know him because of you and Paul. Oh, okay. I've heard you talk about yeah, him. Yeah, we stuff. love James. He's, he's a, he well, puts did you roof have a, boxes on his cars. He did. Oh, don't do that no more. Did you have any idea that this was his garage? No. Can you see what that is? Lamborghini. Can you see what that is? Veyron. He's got a Bugatti Veyron. Well, then he must be doing better than you can. <laughs> YouTube, <is laughs> he, he definitely is. <laughs> his content is insane and his channel is absolutely blown up over the last five years and deservedly so. He's an amazing guy. But yeah, He's got a Veyron. <laughs> <laughs> and it's satin purple <laughs> with white wheels. I mean, that is an... Uh, do you know what? In this country now, they're like... Mm, eight, nine hundred grand now. Oh, my God. You'd spend that again maintaining it. But that's... I think that's exactly the running cost. Yeah. I mean, you are signing yourself up to... I mean, their tyres are only 24 grand, aren't they? Well, they were. They were, okay. But fine. they're not now. Come, come down a bit. They've come down. They're probably 22. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 you know, like, can you imagine? Ridiculous. Like a service is like 15. Grand. Terrifying. Oh, uh, James, well, I mean, Strad Man, why are you, do, like, what have you signed yourself up to? You, but, oh, he's got a few quid. I mean, insane content. I mean, how cool is that? And he drives these cars, right? Oh, he properly drives them. Because quite a lot of these YouTubers, they get these cars, they just look at them. No, 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 no. I disagree, actually. I'm well, going to fight you on that. Who? No. Tell me someone. No, I'm not saying names because then it'll be, he's this and I've done this and he said that and uh, Tony's this and... <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But, but there are YouTubers out there, mate, that buy cars to look at them and then Trying to wrap they don't my brain to you. Hinting out. Well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll come on to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, just in... I mean, he has pretty much completed the YouTube car collection game. He's actually not in people's top three or four favourite car collections, YouTuber car collections, but he's on one of mine because he's got a bloody Bugatti. An orange car. So he's got back. a Lambo. He's got his own Lambo Aventador, which he's had for a while now. He bought another, I think it was either a Pirelli edition or a Roadster, which he's transforming himself into a Liberty Walk. Doing, he's literally got a blade cut when he's doing it himself. Um, and then he's got a GTR. He's got a few other bits as well. He bought like a really dodgy 12C and just keeps <laughs> breaking. I mean, he's just amazing. But I just, I mean... How can you knock that? Even though it's purple. No, no. It's a Veyron. Bravo. Yeah. Oh. Supercar to London. Paul Ch Wallace. Chav. <laughs> Full on one. With his currently stock GTR. Yeah. I you mean, can't have a picture of the Lambo because it don't work. <laughs> isn't it? I don't know what's going on with the Lambo. I just lose he's track. He's so funny. And he's Paul. got the Peugeot as well. Oh, he's got, I mean, should have put the Peugeot in. <laughs> I don't really know what we say. I mean, I'm glad that Paul likes that car, but then he, I thought he, I thought he was like, this is the best car I've ever owned. And then he put a video like two days ago saying, oh, I should have bought an NSX instead, yeah. which we could have told him. Yeah. Because we, we talked about two him. years ago. Yeah. He was like, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? I was like, no, duh. Yeah. I remember so. speaking to him on the phone about it. I mean, we can slag Paul off because he's like a very good friend of ours as well. So we know that he gets our banter, but Paul, that is a terrible car. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think it's a, I think it's a good car. No, I don't. Well, <laughs> let's move on. Anyway, that was the kind of random selection that I want to surprise you with. Let's now finally come on to sort of what the audience suggested were their favourite. Because I said... So I these UK ones then? Uh, these are actually all UK ones, yeah, which makes sense because it's my, my audience. Yeah. So I said, let me know your favourite YouTuber car collections. And I've kind of ranked these in order of the number of votes. I didn't actually count the votes, but just from scrolling through, this was kind Fair. of the gist I got. So in fourth... I don't know why I'm literally saying, in fourth, Shmi. Fair. So at the moment, I count Shmi owning Mustang GT500, GR Yaris, Taycan, GTR Roadster, SLS Black Series, GTR Pro, G63 AMG, Senna, 4GT, Focus RS Heritage, Vantage GTA, and 675RT Spider. <sighs> I mean, it's, I mean it's, a, it's a varied collection, but yeah. a pretty impressive one. Yeah. However, I think the reason that he's not higher up on his list, I think his spec choices, and Tim will, I mean, by the way, Tim's going to be a guest next week. He's coming in. So we can talk to him about this. We will. But I think he will always be very proud of his spec choices, and I don't think he, it won't matter to him at all. Well, he likes to be a bit different, doesn't he? he, you well, know, he, he does tries his own to, thing. Yeah, he does his own thing, and he always has done, to be fair. 
But for example, having GTR Roadster, GTR Pro and the Black Series coming, I don't think people look at that and go, oh, I'd love those cars. Mm. And his GT8 always been questionable on the internet in terms of spec, but he loves it, so that's all that matters. You know, oddly, out of that collection, there's only two cars that I'd probably ever have. Oh, what? Which ones were you, what are you going to... The AMG GTR Pro. Yeah. And oddly, the 675. Yeah. A same. It's one of my favourites in his collection still, yeah. and I actually love the spec of the... Yeah. Of the Spider. I, 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 as incredible as the Senna is, I wouldn't have it because I don't see the point of it. It's a pointless car, in my opinion. Sure. Um... I wouldn't have a Ford GT. No, I wouldn't have the oh, Mustang. SLS Black Series, quite cool. See, I think I would have the Mustang. Would you? Yeah, I think I would have the Mustang. I wouldn't have the Focus Heritage. You'd have the Taycan. N- no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no. I wouldn't have the Yaris, the GRS. As good as it is, I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't buy one. So out of, the, out of all these cars, what is there, 10 or 12 cars? Yeah. There? I'd have two. Yeah. Consider. But I mean, you know, the whole point is, who are we to say? These are the cars that he wants and, and that he does. And so we can ask him about it next week. And it's all about opinions. If that, you know, there's probably quite a lot of cars that we've had that he wouldn't consider at all. I think up until recently, though, probably one of the most famous YouTuber car collections. Yeah. But not always the most desirable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting that. Well, maybe the cars are desirable, but maybe specs aren't. Potentially. Yeah. Next on the list. Harry's Garage, Harry Metcalf. Oh, I like Harry. We, I mean, yeah. arguably one of the best channels, car channels on YouTube. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say the exact same thing about Harry's actual garage. Incredible cars, 20 cars. So I don't know exactly what he's got. So I'll run through them, them in two seconds. Yeah. Very few, if any, well, there's two that I want. But, but like, it's that kind of garage where I applaud him for his choices and I find them super interesting and I love all his content. But I very rarely lust after what he's got, what he's driving. He's a bit like Chris, though, and he has some older stuff, doesn't he? he so has a bit of quirky stuff. Jag XJ Coupe. No, thanks. Rolls-Royce. I uh, actually don't know which one it is. I think it's a silver. Anyway, old Rolls-Royce. Uh, Lamborghini Espada. Jaguar Project 7, Jaguar Project 8. Hello. No, thank you. Testarossa. Kuntash. Lotus Esprit. Lancia Fulvia. Lotus Elan. None. See, <laughs> I, knew, I knew you'd say that. The thing is, I kind of applaud it and I love his passion for all of them because even when it's a car which I'm like I don't really have a lot of interest in this car he's always doing cool stuff in it or he's restoring it or I'm learning something about it which I didn't know but apart from the Project 7 and Project 8 I very rarely lust after it do you know what I mean like it's a collection which I'm like cool for you yeah 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 so a different era to us oh completely like you know he's he's either he's an older gentleman and um he does his own thing, and I really like him. I really like the way he comes across on camera. He's he's very what I'd consider as normal, and he's professional. And uh, I, I really, he's one of my favourites, to be fair. Well, and I think what's interesting is here is he's theoretically, from having a sort of rough scroll, sort of rated higher than Shmi in terms of a garage, even though it's not a garage you'd expect lots of YouTube viewers to sort of obsess over. Mm. You know, you would think that Shmi's garage would be sort of looked at as cooler and being more desirable. But actually, I think Harry's passion and enthusiasm for all of his cars is kind of infectious. And probably the way he comes across on camera as well probably, yeah. probably help stuff. Um, now, top two really boiled down to, and it was kind of even, even Stevens, here in the UK at least. Got a phone call? Let's take that. You right? It's got a mark on my phone. I know you're busy. JWW and TGE. Now, <laughs> I actually, when I started seeing all these comments coming in, JWW and TGE, I genuinely couldn't remember what cars both of them had. Because Me too. I wouldn't have a clue. Since James opened the production bunker, I know that they've been having a lot of cars coming and going for the bunker. His own personal cars as well, I lost track a little bit. And with Tom, I couldn't keep track. So I had to message both of them and say, what's actually in your garage at the minute? Because I don't know. So no, I, got a, I got a rundown. So, here we go. So, uh, James's message. Wait, let me open this up here. Because, I, I mean, this is the problem. I don't have time as well to watch enough YouTube these days. Of course days, not. And people are buying and selling stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, James. It's got the F12 TDF. It's back. It's there. One as we my, know. One, I of mean, my, one of my favourites. Full stop. Unbelievable, right? He should never even try to sell it. I mean, what a fool. Coolest thing in the world. Keep it till he dies. One of, yeah. Yeah. GT3. He's got the manual... 991.2 GT3. You used to have the PDK. I have no idea why he wanted to swap, but that's his personal opinion. I, just I do. Because he enjoys driving like most of us and enjoys driving like most of us. He does a lot of track days, so you'd have the PDK. <laughs> but that's his daily, isn't it? The GT3 is his So you'd have the PDK. <laughs> <laughs> 992 Turbo S. Very good again. Very good again, but... Best all round yeah, sports car. But you if you had the GT3, would you have the Turbo S too? Yeah, because it's a manual. 
the uh yeah okay i see what you're saying i don't know i'm a bit like i'd be interested to know how much he drives the turbo s dbs was not his in, modern classic not interesting right up your street no thank you <laughs> which i think he loves i i uh, i admire it but i would have got v12 vantage personally dbs for me uh, but i think it's his, it's his big long distance cruiser like i, I, I get a porsche he would he's already got two, he's already so. got two uh dbx bleh. Sorry, sorry. Oh, it's sticking my mouth. No offense to James at all. I just don't like that car. Yeah, no. And I'm just like, no, I'm. No, thank you. Skip that. Um, but oh, no, of course, because it's a JWW DBX. Okay, fair play. Fair play to him for having that, but I just don't like, no, thank you. Yeah. Uh, even in green. <laughs> e XL1 is that crazy Volkswagen high mileage. You know, do you know the one I mean? No. So it was one of these, like, it was like a study into, I think it was like 500 MPG or something ridiculous. Or maybe more, I don't know. There's something stupid like MPG. I don't even know what that is. It's a super lightweight, fuel consumption y. It's a weird car. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm giving a thumbs up because, I mean, I think it was expensive. I don't know. Each to their own, but. All right. Uh, GI Yaris. Well, we've already. As everyone has. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, every, like, every you know. YouTube's like, got one of them. Cracking on with that. Uh, and then he says he has a family McCann that he just bops around Which is very good. every now and again. So. I kind of get the desirability really because of the TDF. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like GT3 and Turbo S. I mean, I, okay, fine. You're right. I kind of get it. If you're into the Porsche vibe, fine. DBS, each to their own. DBX, I, leave me alone. I can't argue with the first three, the the, the rest of them. Oh, the McCann as well is a very good car. So how many cars have you got? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So four out of the eight, I'd have. It's, it's a good lineup. Yeah, and that's a yeah, pretty, yeah. I get why it's desirable. But for me, I would beat them up and steal the keys to the TDF. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Do you know what like, would. The rest, of them, the rest of them are cool for him. Yeah. But it's the TDF that I think is super Fair. desirable. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, go on, James. Congrats. Uh, TGE. Now, Tom, this is where I really lose track. I didn't realize how many Porsches this man owns. Carrera GT. F12 Ferrari, 992, oh, 992 what? Turbo S? Has he got a Turbo S? I don't know, this is 992. No, no idea. 996 4S, I think he's got. A 912, a 911 Targa, an M3, an SLS, a Huracan Evo rear-wheel drive, a Range Rover, and a Urus. I mean, <laughs> the man is addicted to 911s. I would argue maybe one too many. <laughs> As in, like, potentially some of those do, like, the 912 in the Targa, same shit, different bucket. Uh, uh, potentially. Yeah, so I would have, out of Tom's cars, uh, the Eurus is, I know you don't like the Eurus, but that is a very good car, the Eurus. Would you have the Eurus and a Range Rover? Um, no. Uh, what Range Rover's he got, though? He's got a big Range Rover Vogue. Big, yeah, but what big, is it, though? I don't know, big Petrol, Range Rover. diesel, what is it? I don't know, big Range Rover Vogue. <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably Just still have the Urus. Would you as well? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, why would you have both? Yeah, why would yeah, you have yeah, both? Maybe the range is going at some point. But, but like, so that, that those there's a lot of similarity. Like, yeah, I totally get why it's desirable. You look at that list, you're like, wow. Like, it's, it's varied. There's classics. There's modern. There's hypercars. There's supercars. There's, like, it's cool. F, F12, yes. F12, very nice. Yeah. Uh, Eurus, yes. I think that's probably it, mate. For M3, because it's like an old story. Like, first time I met him, he had that M3. Yeah, but so that, that's, that's cool. a cool story for him, but that's not for me, that car. Not but for you. Cool no, story. not for me either, but yeah, cool yeah. for him. SLS, they're so hot right now. So, like, fair play. Do you know what? I was telling someone yesterday, I had one of them a long time ago, eight, nine years ago, and I could not give that car away. But that was I the thing, give right? It away. They went through that stage where literally they plummeted in prices, and then everyone suddenly went, "Why are they doing that?" And everyone bought them up, and now I they're know. all expensive I again, know. and they're so like super trendy. Yeah. But to drive, is it just a C sixty three of that era in a slightly cooler body, no, or is it more no, special? No, 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 it's more special. It doesn't go in a straight line. Okay. It, 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 <laughs> so that's it, what probably makes it special. So it's got it's got loads of character and loads okay. of presence. Oh, nice. It's yeah, because just, just bit old and it's not for yeah, me. Yeah, but. I know, I, but I think they're kind of cool. And I, yeah, I, yeah. I, weirdly enough, I prefer the standard SLS to the Black Series. I d like, don't ask me why, but okay. I, I just do. Carrera GT. No, thank you. Shut up. Well, I just, I told you before. We said before. Oh uh, yeah, you did slag it off, didn't you? No, no I didn't slag it off. It's just not. I just. Not for I you. just. No, I just can't see the value in. It. I just don't. You know, I, it's not for me. I, I, I'm not saying it's not cool, or I, I just wouldn't buy it. I've. <laughs> 
And it's nothing so, to do. We're going back to a whole other episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I just think you're wrong. It's a Carrera GT. Well, fair enough. You can think I'm Is not. it a million pound car? I no don't think chance. so. Is it a 350 grand car? I think yes. Yeah, it is. Do you I, not like. I don't think Tom paid 350 grand oh, for it. Sorry, Tom, if I just <laughs> ruined the value of your car. <laughs> but like, in, that, in my head, that's like, it's like a, it's a 599 GTO rival, not an F40 rival, personally. But I'd have a 599 GTO over it. Over a Carrera GT? Yes, oh, mate. I, I, would I would. Well. Maybe I would as well. I, just, I bet it's a Carrera GT. Like, I've never actually driven one, so I don't really know why I'm judging. But of all of them, like, I guess we don't see it much. Anyway, so that's the Carrera GT. Like, I think that's pretty impressive. To have, if you say to someone, what cars have you got? Anyway, so I get why that's desirable. F12 was so right. It's the Porsches for me. I think maybe one too many Porsches. Everything else, I kind of get it. Well, the 9... Not the... the, the there's a nine. If there's a nine nine two in there, yeah, it, six smashed I mean, it. I mean, I, don't, I definitely. I, I think it's the turbo. Didn't he have a turbo? Anyway, I lost track. Uh, the nine nine six. Obviously, I'm a fan of. No, thank you. <laughs> you would say that. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but fundamentally, it doesn't really matter what we care, even though that we're the ones here theoretically rating YouTube car collections. Because according to my audience, at least people love this collection, Fair. and I think they love the variety, and I think it's aspirational because. As I say, you've got modern day supercar from Hurricane Evo. You've got sort of modern classic hypercar. You've got, cla- it's it's ticking most boxes. What's missing? Oh, you should get another Aston. No, he should. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. He's not that silly. I think what is quite ridiculous is of those four, let's take Harry out for a second because you say he's not really, a, he's a now got a great YouTube channel, but Shmi, JW and TG, YouTubers who have amassed pretty incredible collections of cars. Fair. And I think that's pretty inspirational. It is. And and the good thing is, you know, they're all doing their own thing. Very different to the US, which, as you say, was a lot of modif- modified Lambos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so it gives me hope for my 250 short wheelbase revival. <laughs> <laughs> my question to you to kind of round things up are, out of everyone we mentioned, out of all the cars, if you had to pick one for yourself, which car? One car. Out one of car. Of all the ones we just looked at. TDF. More the, the TDF. James's yeah. TDF. Yeah. Not not that actual one, but a TDF. Uh, TDF. Not not that car. Okay. What? Well, it's too high mileage. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, it's red. <laughs> oh yeah, you're bored of red Ferraris, aren't you? Yeah. See, I'd go with Stradman's Veyron every day of the week. Really? Yeah. Like it's a Veyron. Yeah. Anyway, we've probably been a little bit too on the fence. I think people would have wanted you to rip apart a few of these cars, but actually, fundamentally, all that's happened is we. Well, I have ripped them apart. I mean, I haven't said they're all lovely. <laughs> the one, you know. I don't like most of them. I don't don't want you to rip them apart. What I was going to say is that everyone's got amazing cars. Each to their own. Well, yeah. In their opinion, they're they're amazing cars for them. It would be interesting to ask them all, actually, if they'd all ever come on, is do they actually like all of them? Or did they buy them for YouTube? Or have they bought them for YouTube? That's the question we'll put to Shmi next week. Yeah. There we go. What a good teaser for next week's episode. As I say, our first guest of uh, this year uh, will be uh, the lovely Tim Burton, Shmi 150. Uh, and we will quiz him about all different things, but including this, yeah, his car collection, how he puts them together, um, what his sort of incentives are for buying and selling, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode and you're watching it here on YouTube, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss future episodes. If you want to follow Tony, he's at Tony Gravelwood Car Sales on most platforms. I'm at Seen Through Glass on most platforms. If you want to try my coffee, head over to drinkperla.co.uk forward slash STG, <laughs> order about 100 packs and I'll be in a 250 short wheelbase <laughs> revival before you know it. Thanks for watching. Catch up soon. Bye-bye. Bye.